Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at a candidates tournament game from 1962 between Bobby Fischer with the white pieces and Victor Korchnoi with the black pieces. This game started off as a Pierce defense and soon went into an Austrian attack. Now for those of you who don't know much about the Austrian attack, uh, let me say that it is white's most aggressive system against the Pirk. Uh, defense uh, is very very sharp and if black makes a mistake uh, he can lose very quickly if you get uh, to look into uh, a database and look at this variation you will see many many uh, miniature games um, where white wins in uh, less than 20 moves uh, because the positions get so sharp there's a lot of pieces on the board and white uh, sets up this uh, large pawn center. So if you don't know what you're doing with the black pieces, you can end up in trouble uh, very quickly. But the pick is great for those type of players who have a lot of experience and who like to play in a provocative manner to entice their opponents to attack. Uh, like in the Alicon's defense, for example, or Owen's defense. He's uh, hyper modern uh, defenses where you're trying to entice your opponent uh, provoke him uh, to attack here but the Austrian attack is very uh, very dangerous weapon especially uh, in the hands of somebody uh, like uh, Bobby Fischer I just want to show you um, another game of Fischer's just real quickly because this uh, variation was one of his uh, favorite variations um, to play against a pick so I just want to show you Another one of his games in this variation so you can see uh, how dangerous uh, he was. Here's a game Fisher played with the white pieces against a player named um, Jovanovic in 1968. Again, Austrian attack here. Knight f3, castles, bishop d3. Knight of d7, castles, and now black goes for this uh, early e5 here. And uh, this helps, this actually, this is a mistake a lot of um, players make, is they try to establish this E5 uh, so early, uh, it's black in the position, and it can be uh, premature, as you'll see in this game. So this actually helps facilitate white's attack. So after D takes E5, D takes E5, now just F5. Because um, white wants to open up the position and attack on the king side so these moves help uh black excuse me white do exactly that c6 right it allows um uh keep you know allows a piece to come to uh, c7 maybe queen c7 even queen b6 right uh exploiting the open g1 to a7 diagonal and also prevents the knight from coming here and making this uh leap fisher plays Knight to g5, already uh, commencing the attack sequence. So knight b6, a4 from Fisher, harassing the knight. So a5, bishop e3, taking over the dark squares, bishop h6. So now um, black is threatening to win the piece. Queen d2, it protects the uh, piece. f6. Weakening is queen side in the process, uh, excuse me, is king side in the process. You can already see that black is already in a world of trouble. Excellent move by Fisher, always fighting uh, for the initiative, a la Paul Morphy. Black decides to part with his, uh, his bishop there. Um, if he plays this move, then just simply uh, bishop takes b6 as in the game. And let's say queen f6, for example, and then this bishop c5. So black took with his bishop. Bishop takes b6, now queen d7. And now the bishop just dropped back to c5. Attacking the rook. Rook came to e8. h4. And notice just Fisher's pressure in the position. Bishop f4, g3. Just putting on a this constant pressure black 
just plays g takes f5 he could have moved the bishop but he still lo he still lost after uh bishop c4 and let's say king h8 and then white just simply rips open the position f takes h takes and then a move like queen f6 is good. Right? And if bishop g7 uh, and just queen uh, g6. So black is definitely busted. So he just decides, I'm just going to give up the piece. g takes f5. g takes. f takes. And this is all child's play for Fisher. You can see the big fort. So king h8. And Fisher just played f5, of course. F takes e5 is, is really powerful also. So f5, knight a6, bishop takes, b takes a6, and king h2, and black uh, had enough. And just in only 23 moves, uh, you can see black is just totally uh, annihilated. And these are the ideas that um, uh, white has in the... Uh, just one more from Fisher real quick. Uh, this is his game from 1965 at the Capablanca Memorial against a player named uh, Francisco Perez. And this time, uh, Black uh, said he plays knight c6 and white gets an e5. And Black is playing well so far. He's... Uh, you know, cause white to push his pawn forward and he's occupying the d5 square. c3, bishop g4, queen e2 from Fisher. And you can see white just totally, uh, slowly grabs the initiative. h3, bishop e6, castles, bishop d5. And although black is not lost here, he has not really done... Uh, enough to really uh, counterattack the uh, uh, white center here. B5, a little misdirect, misdirected there. Rook AD1, A6, B3 from Fisher, Knight A5. Again, I'm not really understanding this. What that move is going to do. E6 from Fisher. We can see the um, attack. Beginning now on the king side, there it is, knight g5. You know, a lot of thematic moves here. Rook d1, b4, again, too slow, too little, too late. Knight e6, b takes, knight takes g7, queen d4 check, and king h2. And black resigned again. There's no remedy uh, in this position. Of course, if king takes g7, then this is um, just, you know, abuse all day after king g8 and, uh, let's say, bishop e5, for example. And then you can see the benefit of the king being on h2, so there's no checks available. So, with that said, you can see Fischer's um, prowess in this, um, in this uh, Austrian attack. With that said... How does Victor, the terrible Korchnoi, uh, deal with this? All right. So e4 from Fischer, d6, d4, knight of six. And we're in the Austrian attack. Bishop g7, knight of three, castles. Bishop e2 from Fischer. And c5. D takes c5. There's different things that can be played here. Um, D5 is possible here. And black would counterattack the center immediately with E6 castles. And that um, so was a good game uh, for black. Right? He goes into this uh, Benoni uh, type uh, formation here. So D5 doesn't really cut it uh, for white uh, too much. Another idea is E5 right away. Of course, the line, knight of d7, and then these lines get very sharp. You have e d6, e takes d6, and again d5, rook e8, similar uh, position. 
official opts for d takes c5 here and now queen a5 is all well known to put pressure against the knight here since he's pinned and threaten uh this pawn right here okay therefore castles if white gets greedy and plays c d6 then knight takes e4 of course d takes e7 this is all well known too is that black just gets initiative for the sake of the pawn queen d3 and bishop takes b takes and then just rook uh e7 all right and this is good this is all good for black if castle then just knight takes c3 is possible or you can just keep going for uh more with bishop f5 so you really do not want to take there so fisher has the right idea he develops and black regains his pawn uh with check here all right so this has a lot of similarities to uh sicilian uh defense here all right this it looks as if the c pawn has been traded for the d pawn black has some counterplay on the c file all right it's like a old uh, fi uh old fashioned uh dragon variation in the sicilian if you will all right king h1 useful move in most of these uh type positions getting the king off of that dangerous diagonal many times white will try to go to e1 with the queen and transfer at some point over to h4 so this diagonal becomes useful also you see rook lifts of course after the knight say comes to g5 you often see rook lifts to f3 and to h3 and the like game continue knight uh, c1 and now knight d2 by fisher now if he is over ambitious here and goes for e5 then he'll be overextended he will be falling right into black's hands and this is the type of play that black uh would like d takes e5 f takes e5 knight takes knight e4 trying to exploit some tactics just simply queen a5 knight takes e5 queen takes and bishop f4 and after a simple move like queen a5 um you know black is just up material here queen a5 or even queen d5 both good moves so e5 is would be premature so fisher plays knight d2 right he figures he'll harass the queen move like knight b3 later on so a5 a4 now i haven't addressed uh black's plan i've told you what white's plan is well Black's plan is to counterattack on the queen side. It's very similar to ideas in the Sicilian uh, defense when you're playing the dragon or knight off variations or most variations in the Sicilian. Black is going to try to attack on the king side while managing uh, white's threats on the king side. It's very important that you don't totally ignore what white is doing on the king side because, uh, you know, getting checkmated is very uh, imp an important uh, thing that you want to avoid so you have to manage what white's doing on the king side but meanwhile you're getting your counter playing um so here when i see this move a5 from Korsnoy and i see the response a4 that lets me know that things are going pretty good for black because this is the, what black wants black wants white to play on the side of the board where he is uh strong at in this case black is better on the queen side so um if black can get white to drop what he's doing on the king side and take time to play on the queen side that helps his cause right so better for fisher instead of a5 would of course be a move like knight b3 just hitting the queen right gaining time right and of course say queen b6 could be played or um he could even try to go for it with a move like f5 here but i like these uh, attacks on the queen knight a4 knight b3 uh etc so fisher goes a4 knight b4 by Korsnoy. right exploiting the fact that 
A4 has been played. And this is kind of annoying that there's this pressure put on a C2 because, of course, now this knight can't really move because the C2 pawn would drop. So that's a problem. So knight B3, queen B6. Again, still a problem. And now Fisher uh, plays G4. He tries to, you know, go for it, go for it. I want you to notice, too, how this bishop, I'm sorry, how this queen on b6 controls this diagonal so that this bishop can't come here. So Fisher goes for the g4. If he plays rook uh, f3, then knight g4 with this idea. So Fisher goes for it. He plays g4. And now you're about to see the purpose of this knight revealed. Bishop takes g4, exclaim by Korshnoi. Bishop takes g4, knight takes g4, queen takes g4, and uh-oh. Knight takes c2 with time on the rook. So Fisher says, you know what? I'm not going to um, defend this rook. And if you notice too, the knight is unprotected on b3. So the rook is unprotected, the knight is unprotected. Right? Well, the rook is protected somewhat by the knight, but the knight is totally unprotected, and the rook is um, attacked. So Fisher makes a decision. Instead of doing rook b1 and then allowing just queen b3, he decides to play knight b1, the lesser of two evils. So he protects this knight, and he just loses the exchange here. Now Korshnoi plays queen c6. Powerful move. Not only is he on the C file here, but he's attacking this pawn. Okay. And now, after all of those pawn advances um, on the king side, uh, White's king looks very, very uh, uh, drafty. His king side looks very drafty. So Fisher keeps pressing on anyway. F5. Very bold move. I think he knew he was in some trouble here, but he decided to go out on his shield as they would say queen c4 just strong moves by Korshnoi containing threats this time to the rook on f1 so queen f3 and now queen takes a4 notice that uh, you students out there notice how Fisher's moves a lot of them contain threats and not just one threat but double double attacks we saw the the knight and the rook were attacked simultaneously and this time we saw that the rook on f1 and the pawn on a4 were attacked simultane simultaneously. And your opponent uh, most times can only defend one at a time. Okay, notice that even here, Korchnoi is threatening the knight on b5 and the knight on a1. He keeps creating uh, dilemmas and trilemmas uh, for Fisher to deal with. And when you constantly uh, put dilemmas and trilemmas in front of a person, they're not their position's not gonna be able to hold up uh for long. You can't you can't stop every threat, right? It's like water leaking from different places in the house, right? Eventually you're gonna run out of buckets to stop the water from coming down. Game continued, knight c seven, but remember, I told you it was a dilemma here. And the knight both knights were attacked, so Queen takes a one. Fisher decides that he's going to keep this knight. Now, he could have uh, captured, um, but he probably figured that, you know, his position is so bad that he probably should try to keep the pieces on and hopefully get some kind of attack. So, objectively, knight takes a8 is better. Well, he plays knight d5 with this threat here. So... Now he just plays rook a8. So, so for example, if he takes knight takes here, and just rook takes, f takes, f takes, queen b3, queen takes b7, rook f8, and you can see that black um, has enough defenses, and he he just winds up better at the end. There's really um, not too much more that white can do. Fisher probably seeing this, he he decides to keep the knight on the board.
game continued and Fisher decides to build up pressure and Courtsnoy being the gangster that he is just simply grabs the pawn he's not even worried about uh, the pawn in e7 so Bishop takes e7 Bishop e5 again threat must be addressed rook f2 queen c1 check rook f1 queen h6 again notice the pressure Courtsnoy keeps putting on so now the mate must be addressed again. And it's addressed with the weakness, weakening move, like h3. Korchnoi just takes because he wants to use this g file. Bishop takes. So Fisher gets the exchange back, but he's down a bunch of pawns. Knight e7. Knight takes f5. Queen e6. Rook g1. And the pawns... Uh, unopposed rook g4 queen b3 offering the trade of uh, queens and at the same time providing an escort for the a pawn queen f4 a3 rook g3 and here's where court snoy shuts everything down he just plays queen takes g3 because there is no way for um, white to stop this pawn. So for example. Knight takes g3. Then just simply a2. And there's no way that um, white can do anything about it. Except give up his queen. Because the bishop is guarding uh, the a1 square. So Fisher uh, had to resign in round 5 of the candidates tournament in 1962. Um, after losing to a beautiful uh, played pick. Uh, by Victor Korsnoy and it's awesome to see that the dark square bishop uh, the centerpiece of the pick defense and of his sister opening the dragon is just standing there proudly uh, on e5 so very uh, very uh, nice uh, game uh, by Victor Korsnoy and I hope you enjoyed it thank you uh, for listening and I hope you enjoyed that video and learned something. Please check my links below. Uh, please support my channel via the donation button. Please hit all the buttons you're supposed to. Like and subscribe and all of that so that my videos will become more visible in the YouTube world. Right? There's so many test videos out there. Also, notice too in the links you'll find DVDs or slash uh, books on the opening that we talked about today, which is the Pyrrhics. And I encourage you also to go through my channel uh, and check out uh, the different videos. There's tons of videos, all types of openings, middle game strategy, how to make plans in chess, end games. Um, there's uh, compilation videos where I just go over Grandmaster games in a certain opening and analyze them. Those are very long videos. So whatever you're looking for, short videos, long videos, middle game, end game, opening, uh, they're all... Uh, here for you um, to uh, learn from and enjoy all uh, for free and with love. Okay, so thank you for listening, and I will see you guys soon on the next video.